Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over the brand new rear view mirror from Wolfbox. This is the G840H. And this is going to be an unboxing, DIY install, and review. With this we are going to be installing the hardware kit. That way we can have the 24 hour monitoring on this camera. And I'll go over some of the differences between this G840 and the G900, which is this guy right here. But let's get started. Some of the main differences with this actual rear view mirror compared to like most popular one, the G900, this one actually has a uh, built-in Wi-Fi so you can use the Wolfbox app to transfer videos or view your videos with your phone and download it right onto your phone instead of having to mess with this actual SD card that you do on the G900. That's one main difference. The other one is the camera is not a 4K front-facing camera, it's only 2.5K. And then the rear camera is only 1080p as opposed to 2.5k rear camera on the G900 and the 4k front camera on the G900. I have tested this out already on a different vehicle and I will say I, I can't notice a difference. They are both uh, very good. I'm sure if you get down to the details editing pictures or editing videos you will be able to see. We'll actually take a dive into that and see if there is a big difference. But other than that, those are the main differences. Um, I would say having the Wi-Fi uh, ability is a, is a big deal for me, um, making it a lot easier. You know, I use uh, the camera all the time if I'm going off-roading, and something happens, I want to grab, you know, the incident off of the rearview camera or dash cam easily, quickly. You know, going to Moab, I do it all the time. Just grab stuff off of there. Yeah. Look at that thing. Yeah. But I have to usually stop, get out the SD card, connect it to my laptop and pull it off. So that will make this camera a lot better, or a lot better for me, I would say. Um, now let's say you are not really wanting to do a full install, you don't want to do, uh, you know, replace your actual rear view mirror. Wolfbox did just come out with this i17 dash cam. This is a front 4K dash cam and a 2.5K cabin camera. And this was usually a, a lot easier installation. It doesn't require covering up your actual rear view mirror. So I will post a link to this video that I installed this on my BMW. So we are actually gonna be installing both but never hurts to have extra cameras. So let's do an unboxing on this G840H and uh, see what we got. You have the actual rear view mirror, which is your dash cam. And on here, you've got your SD GPS jack, audio video, that's for your rear camera. And this is a type C power cable. Here we have the pry tool. This is what actually attaches to the rear view mirror. It goes around the old rear view mirror. A couple different clips for the wires. User manual, power cable. We won't be using this because we have the actual hardware kit. Bracket for the rear camera. GPS, make sure you mount this side facing up just like it says. If you've got a small rear view mirror, smaller bands, microfiber cloth, rear view camera. And then the hardware kit. The 12 volt is the red one. The battery will be the yellow one, and then you got the ground. And then this tiny little box is actually a sensor for the car battery. If the battery voltage gets below a certain voltage, it'll stop powering the camera. It won't actually kill your battery overnight if your battery is kind of a weaker battery or a bad battery. Wolfbox always recommends testing your dash cam before installing it. So now let's go ahead and install it on the car. And the vehicle I'm gonna be installing it on is a 2008 BMW 335XI. It's an E92. And before you start, just go ahead and make sure you disconnect the battery. And that is in the trunk of this BMW. I'm gonna remove this little panel. And here's the battery. You can remove the ground terminal. Go inside, hit your uh, foot on the brake pedal, that way it drains everything from the battery. Now on the passenger side, we need to start by removing this little airbag cover here. And this will hide a T20 Torx bolt. 
put your pry tool in here, pry away, it'll snap outwards, and then it should pull backwards. Just like that. And then these little clips are on here. You can put them back on there. And here's your airbag. Just be gentle with that. To give yourself a little bit more room under the headliner, you can undo this little cover here and remove the other T20 bolt. That way you can pull the whole headliner down a little bit lower. We can start by attaching the actual dash cam to the mirror. That'll help us with actual measurements of all the wiring. And then you can start with connecting all your wiring to the camera and routing it down the side that you want to go. On my BMW, I'm going down the A pillar on the passenger side. The GPS wiring will be able to go from the top side down. Once I find a good spot, it can go to. And it looks like right about here is where it'll fit best. Let's take off 3M sticky tape. Make sure the side goes up. Let's bring the camera wire up and then we can route all of it nicely under the headliner. So the rear view camera is going to run down the passenger side. I'll remove this trim, kind of go under the carpet. And then it'll feed up here, inside here. You can pry this part back and it'll go right there and it'll climb up, go up the A pillar up to the actual dash cam. You can use a little fishing tool just down there. Get up. These little clips always fall out. You gotta slide them back in. Make sure you remove them. Some of them stay into the actual body here, so just get them, remove them. And this is when you can start routing your camera wires to the back. Power wire, we're actually going to start from the bottom and go up just like we did with the camera. And be gentle with all these wires, pulling them through. So we have our camera wire and our power wire. And it will feed up here along the A pillar. I'm going to take some zip ties and clean up the wiring. A little easier if you move the weather trim. And then you can put back the A pillar cover. You have to push down the front. And there's a clip right here that snaps into the body. And then you can put this T20 bolt back in here. Then we will finish tucking all this wiring. And you can reattach your mirror holder. And that holds up the whole headliner. All right, now that we have the rear view mirror mostly installed, we can now reconnect the battery and then we will figure out what power wires we're gonna use from the fuse panel that's behind the glove box. So under the glove box here, we have the fuse panel. And you can see where I put the yellow one and where I put the red one. There was no actual fuses in there, but they do have power. The yellow one has power when the key is off or at all times, and the red one has power when the key is on. Looks like it is number 3 and 10. Right, 3 and 10. 3 is the yellow, 10 is the red. And then you can tap in your ground, probably use that bolt or one close by. So now we need to route the rear camera wiring under this carpet and then it'll go under this seat this is the E92 so it's uh, two separate seats so you can pop this up and I already popped it up and then it pulls out probably follow these speaker wires up inside the trunk
All right, next you need to unplug this piece right here. This is where you're actually gonna feed the wires through to get inside the trunk. So let's feed the wires in here first. guide wire through. Now I just need to pull the actual camera wire through. Before I do that, I'm going to spray a little bit of WD-40 inside here. Add a little bit of lubrication to the wires. And after pulling all the wire through there, I would test the camera out again, just to make sure you didn't damage any wire. So I've got the rear trunk cover taken off. And then I have the actual handle removed, drilled a little tiny hole down there, and that's going to be where I shove my wiring through. And here I'm just preparing the wire to safely sit under the trunk cover. So then you can come over here to the tail light, and you got to figure out which of your uh, wire series for your reverse lights. I was able to test them out with a test light. And for this BMW E92, it is a black wire with a blue tracer. But there also is another black wire with a blue tracer right next to it that is almost identical, but it's not live. Just test it with a test light. And we can connect the red wire from the camera to this light to activate the reverse mode on the rear view mirror. So now when I put the car into reverse, goes in the backup mode. All right, now that we got the back all put together, it is now time to officially mount the camera. So I'm gonna mount it actually right here facing backwards and I'm gonna use this 3M tape. Make sure you use some alcohol wipes first to clean off the area, clean off the camera, and then hold it for a good 30 seconds after mounting it. So now we need to go for a test drive. So what's cool about this uh, rear view mirror is how wide the rear view camera is. And you'll start seeing the car. Right now their car is right at my door, but I can see it in the rear view mirror. That means when people are in my blind spots, I'm gonna be able to see them. That would be my favorite part about these uh, dash cam mirrors. And then you get to see people run red lights like that. And here's a little bit of footage of the G840 in my Wrangler. And this is to give a little bit of perspective from driving late at night.
and I think this is how I broke my axle. So stay tuned for that video on re-gearing my Jeep. This is the view you could have with your rear view mirror. Crystal clear picture, nice and wide. Clear during the day, clear at night. Definitely a good modification for any vehicle. And then you put it in reverse. That way you can see everything. Definitely uh, happy with these uh, rear view mirrors. And come check out my new YouTube channel for more Jeep and BMW content. Oh.